Hi, this is Luke from CatsAndCarp.com, and this is part two of my trip to Alaska. Now, one of the first things I did with Tommy is take him to B&J Sporting Goods to get some serious rain gear. Tommy needed a serious set of rain bibs and a rain jacket, and it's hard to find that, let alone find it in a toddler size. But uh, if you want that sort of thing, if you need to get outfitted with good outweather gear, go to B&J's. And sure enough, they had these little Grundle uh, bibs and jackets, just perfect size for them, and they're absolutely waterproof. See the moose? B&J's has been around forever and they have great Alaskan fishing gear and outdoor equipment. If you want something that's uniquely Alaskan you can't find anywhere else, this is where you go. For instance, if you want serious halibut jigs, snagging hooks, 12-aught hooks, or 14-aught hooks, or even 20-aught salmon shark hooks, this is about the only place you can find them. They also sell recreational crabbing uh, equipment, uh, shrimp pots for catching shrimp, and uh, even things like clam guns. Clam guns are essentially a hollow pipe with a hole in the handle. And you take the pipe and you shove it through the silt over the clam, and then you cover the hole in the pipe, pull up, and the clam comes with it. It's a great device. But you can also get great rain boots, uh, really cheap. And uh, they even have survival suits, so if your ship goes down in the Gulf of Alaska, you won't die of hypothermia. But dip netting equipment, this is a very uniquely Alaskan thing. Dip nets are these uh, nets with 30-foot handles that you use for scooping salmon out of the rivers. Great, great fun, great way to get a lot of fish. Yeah. Next, I took Tommy to Ship Creek in downtown Anchorage next to the port and the rail yards. This is an industrial location, but it's only minutes away from where I used to work. And it's a great place to experience Alaskan combat fishing at its finest. If you find yourself in downtown Anchorage when the salmon are running, you can come down to Ship Creek and have a real chance of catching a couple salmon with only an hour or two to spare. How you doing? Dude, it looks not as good as you're doing. <laughs> hey, would you mind holding those up for the camera? Oh man, nice, nice fish. In fact, if you're a tourist and don't have your gear, there's even a place to rent your own fishing gear, waders, nets, whatever. Ship Creek also has these great salmon observation areas that are off limits to fishing. You can see hundreds of salmon schooling up to spawn. Do you see fish, Tommy? After spawning, salmon die, so as the season progresses, more and more of these dead salmon wash downstream, and by the end of the season, there'll be literally thousands of dead salmon all over the bank and river. After Ship Creek, we drove south to one of my favorite fly fishing spots, a place where I go to catch Arctic char, a beautiful Alaskan fish in a beautiful location on a really small fly and a really light fly rod. It's just an absolute wonderful, wonderful uh, fish to catch and we caught tons of them.
Sometimes teaching catch and release can be tricky. As a parent, this was an interesting trip. This was the first time Tommy really held the rod on his own and really got involved in fishing. He's been fishing with me many, many times, but he's always just enjoyed hanging out in the outdoors and being out with dad. This was his first time really getting his hands on the fish and, and being able to do it by himself because it was such a light rod and light fish. And he really loved it. But what I didn't anticipate is that he was not happy about me taking the fish from him and letting it go. Hold on, Tom. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Careful. Careful. Look at that. Look at that beautiful char. Be careful, Tom. Let go. Do you want to hold him? Come here, Tom. The next morning, me, Tommy, and my father drove south along Turnigat Arm to the city of Whittier, Alaska. It's a gorgeous drive along the ocean, and on the way, we stopped on an observation platform to watch salmon coming upstream to spawn. Those fish do not fly up on the side of the bank. They yes. get there. Yes. Well, here, when these salmon come Oh, see these! Oh, I see these! Fishies! Oh, a fish! You see a fish? Down there, Oh, I see fish! I see fish! No, no. The drive to Whittier is gorgeous and fascinating. You go past Lake Portage and Portage Glacier and through some of the most beautiful mountains and waterfalls. It's an absolutely breathtaking location, but the Whittier Tunnel is fascinating. The Whittier Tunnel is a two and a half mile single lane tunnel. So you have to wait your turn to drive through the tunnel. All traffic going to Whittier leaves on top of the hour and traffic from Whittier leaves on the 30. The train traffic also has its own schedule as well. So when you arrive, you sit in this beautiful valley and wait your turn to enter the tunnel. The Whittier Tunnel is the second longest tunnel in North America. It's fascinating. And as you can see, it's just one lane. Uh, so, and there's the railroad tracks. You're, you're actually driving on top of the railroad tracks. Other than the little emergency exit sidewalk on the left side, that's it. And uh, you're just driving for about eight to 10 minutes through a mountain. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's an experience. Because this tunnel is so long, uh, asphyxiation and fire is like a really big hazard. So uh, they've got this emergency a, a escape route uh, on the sidewalk on the side, and they also have these emergency like safe houses uh, every several hundred yards so that if there's a fire, you can hide in this bunker and, and, until help arrives. And because two cars can't fit in the tunnel, they have motorcycles that are strong enough to pull a fire engine. They used to tow wrecks out of the tunnel. The city of Whittier is also a very fascinating place. Whittier gets about 20 to 40 feet of snow in the wintertime, so it's a difficult place to build a home and a difficult place to live. So everyone in the town lives in that apartment building on the hill. It's this really, really small town. 
town with hardly any buildings, but it's absolutely gorgeous. We came to Whittier to go surf fishing in the ocean, but instead we found salmon. Lots and lots of pink salmon. Oh my goodness, I think we came at the right time. <laughs> These are pink salmon in their spawning colors. We also call them humpies. The males have the big humped back and the snaggle tooth and the females are more streamlined. They're not a fish we eat all the time, but when we do, we only eat them when they're silver. By the time they turn these colors and get the hump on their back, their meat's not that good, but they're still loads of fun to catch. And this spot I'm fishing is gorgeous. It's, that's actually the ocean right there. I'm fishing where a small stream is dumping into the ocean. It's only a few feet deep and there's about maybe seven feet of tide difference right in this location. And I'm fishing low tide as the tide's coming up. And literally these fish are swimming in anywhere from half a foot to three feet of water and we're hooking fish every cast. It's just absolutely amazing. The hard part was not snagging them. And I'm using an ultralight $17 Daiwa rod and reel combo I picked up at Fred Meyers. Got eight pound fluorocarbon line on it and it was about three minutes to land each fish. I caught about 20 fish in an hour, 15 minutes. So you do the math, it was constant fish. Just absolutely the best pink fishing I've ever had.
The fishing was so good, we uh, pushed it right up to the last minute and barely made the tunnel ride back to Anchorage. But uh, it was just absolutely epic, epic fishing. And uh, we went back exhausted. Little Tommy was all tuckered out and slept the whole ride back. And on the way back, we stopped in Girdwood, Alaska to the Alpine Bakery, a spot we always stop, and got ourselves a pre-dinner donut and a little attaboy for a wonderful day of fishing. The next day, we took Tommy to look at the mud flats in Cook Inlet. Anchorage sits on a series of bluffs that overlook Cook Inlet, and it has the second highest tides in the world. It's a 37 foot tide at its most extreme. So when the tide goes out in Cook Inlet, miles of these mud flats are exposed. And this uh, marshy tidal area is a fabulous duck hunting location. I used to walk down from my house and duck hunt down here as a teenager. Next, we stopped at Potter's Marsh, which is a park south of Anchorage. It's a beautiful place where you can see wildlife and moose, birds, and, and even salmon swimming upstream. It's a beautiful location. It was nearby, so I took Tommy to, to check out the salmon and get to see some salmon up close and personal. <laughs> These are two pink salmon, and one of them's rotting to death from old age. And this right here is a silver salmon. When they get old, they turn all pink. <laughs> I told Tommy we could go fishing, so he took off running for the car. That boy loves fishing, so I said, I gotta get him his first salmon. So we decided to go back to Whittier, and this time, I wasn't gonna go fishing. I was gonna let Tommy go fishing Now you'll see Tommy throw a lot of temper tantrums in these videos, but keep in mind this is a two and a half year old boy who is very jet lagged and hasn't had a nap in a, many days. He was a real trooper and did great. Tom? Yeah, walk. Remember, Tom, walk backwards. You got it. Nice. You got him. That's all right. You'll get another one. Keep going, Tommy. Oh, you got another one? Good for you, Tom. You know what to do, walk backwards. You're so strong, Tommy, come on. Pink. Come on, Tommy. Keep pulling. No, not from the rod tip as much. That's not, you gonna, you gonna line him in? Oh, that's a legitimate, I suppose. He's two. Two? Oh my god. No, he's got two and a half, technically. Grab him. Tommy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Put it in. We'll put down the rod and once you can hold the fish. Oh, nice. I'll buy a fish. You buy a fish? 
Oh. Buffy. He's trying to hook down. I see how it is. Buffy. 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 See you later. See you later. I'll get a picture of you. Here, you want to pick him up? Oh, he got away. He's getting away. Pick it up. Pick it up, Tom. You got it. Come on. Oh, you got him. No, no, just walk. Walk over here. Walk over here. You got it. That's a big one. Here, you want a picture with your fish? Here, hold your fish. Hold your fish. Yeah. Like that. You got him? You got him? Hold him up for the camera and say cheese. Oh, no, no, Tom. Don't. Hey Tommy, look, there's a fish on your feet. <laughs> yeah, get, yeah, he's he's lost. Go give him a hand. Good job, Tom. In the end, Tommy hooked six pink salmon all by himself and landed two of them without any help from me. And that deserves some celebratory pizza in Girdwood. It was an absolutely fabulous, fabulous day. We had a blast. If you like this video, check out our other videos, including part one and part three of my trip to Alaska. And if you like what you see, don't forget to hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.